good afternoon or good evening whatever you want to call it all the participants the postgraduate students in particular uh, i would be presenting or i would be talking about this short case uh, who the case is pretty old when i was in malan azad medical college i had handled this case but uh, i thought this would be a good change because this is an not the usual short case that is kept in the exam but if this patient is moving around in the institution where the examination is being held i am sure this would be kept as a short case so i think you should have a working knowledge of this sort of a case so with these words i would narrate the history and the history is very short as we have always been emphasizing that in a short case the history needs to be only one or two relevant points so this patient is a 41 year old man and who presented with exquisite pain in the tip of the little finger since the last one year and on closer questioning he also volunteered that during winter months when he washes his hands in cold water obviously the water is cold the pain somehow increases so this was the history of this patient and this is the clinical presentation the little finger here is the one which is the affected finger and he was complaining about so if you look at the finger the findings of inspection dictate that i do not know whether you can pick it up but there is a slight bluish discoloration in this area this area this is white this is red this is the normal finger so you can compare with that this is the normal reddish bright reddish hue in the nail bed which you get in a normal finger but here this normal hue is only present in this area and in this central zone more or less central zone there is a bluish hue so this is the 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 area of affliction and with the history that he volunteered that there is some sort of a exacerbation of the pain during winter months while washing hands is the clue it's an important clue also it was uh, he was he was also volunteering volunteering that in case the little finger and inadvertently strikes especially the nail area if it strikes against any object there is a very very electrifying type of exquisite pain well with this we would like to go in for the clinical further clinical findings of the signs which we elicit and the first and the foremost is the size so the usually this sort of a discoloration is less than 1 cm in diameter so if you look at this this is just a few millimeters not even a centimeter in diameter predominantly hair so just a few millimeters is the size and this when i used the blunt head of a of an all pin the blunt head of the all pin to apply pressure on this discolored area there was excruciating pain whereas just in the neighboring area if you apply similar pressure there was no pain at all so it was a sort of a point tenderness it was a pin point site where tenderness was there and this test is usually known as love test there is another very interesting test which goes by the name of hildreth test and what is this test 
this is negating the tenderness or point tenderness by putting a tourniquet. You put a tourniquet around the arm, inflate the tourniquet with the effect that you are inducing ischemia into the forearm, hand and the finger, the affected finger. And interestingly, if you inflate the tourniquet for a significantly long time, maybe 10 to 15 minutes time, the pinpoint tenderness disappears. So this test is known as Hildreth test. Remember the love test is direct pressure creating point pinpoint tenderness and Hildreth test is elimination of this pinpoint tenderness by tourniquet induced ischemia. Lastly, on immersing the digit in ice cooled water, there was exacerbation of the discomfort. Now all this is characteristic of what is known as the glomus tumor. So this patient has all the signs which can pinpoint or which point towards the diagnosis of glomus tumor. And such patients are usually prone to be diagnosed as on the spot. So they are spot diagnosis. These are spotters. But you have to confirm by performing all these tests. You cannot just by looking at the digit say that it is a Yes, there is a very strong suspicion that we are dealing with a glomus tumor, but then these features should be there. And lastly, this is occasionally seen. If you do a trans illumination of the finger pad or the finger pulp, you may see a red opaque dot in the region of the discoloration. So you will have to darken the room and you will have to use a, a very small bulb torch, a small torch. I think the one which is these days in your cell phone may be just ideal for this. So you trans illuminate the pulp of the finger and you look at it from the nail side. And if you find that there is an opaque dot there, which is not illuminating, then this is again a test, but this test may or may not be pos positive. If it is there, then it further confirms that we are dealing with a glomus tumor. And what are the investigations which we usually do in these cases? The first and the foremost is a plain X-ray, AP and lateral of the finger, not of the hand. If the hand is affected, you can get the uh, X-ray of the hand. But in this case, the little finger is, in, is affected. So the X-ray needs to be of the finger, AP and lateral. And it has been seen that long-standing lesions of such nature are capable of creating an indentation, not erosion, but indentation or cortical impression on the cortex of the phalanx. So this needs to be looked at. In our case, the x-ray was normal. So that is why I'm not putting it up. And then there are two more investigations. Since this is a soft tissue lesion, essentially, MRI scan, and it is said that the high Tesla, the higher Tesla, three Tesla, 1.5 Tesla, these are the ones which will pick up this lesion as a bright signal on T2 weighted images. And last but not the least, ultrasonography. A trained musculoskeletal ultrasonologist may be able to pick up this lesion even on the simple ultrasonogram. What we ordered for this patient was an MRI scan. And I have put an arrow here for your benefit to show you the brightly enhancing 
pin head size or slightly larger than pin head size lesion it is not there in these sections in in the adjoining sections it is not there but when we reach the fingertip area this sec section shows a bright signal intensity which when magnified further appears like this so this is the t2 weighted image where a bright signal intensity and oval or a circular area is seen which is suggestive of a lesion more likely to be glomus tumor but remember in some cases this may not be positive you may have a negative mri but even on the strong clinical grounds you can presume that the patient is suffering from a glomus tumor and you can operate upon these patients to treat them and what is the treatment obviously this lesion involves the treatment involves removal of the nail identification of the glomus tumor or sometimes there may be satellite tumors just there so either it is a single glomus tumor or there may be two or three of them and this needs surgical excision the nail bed may be raised up as a flap or it may be incised and you can reach it directly but usually by and large this is what is done we will show you how it is done nail bed raised as a flap and the tumor can be excised rather the classical description is that the tree that the tumor frequently shells out you can just shell it out just like you can shell out an egg out of the egg shell so this lesion can be easily scooped out so this is uh, our patient the nail bed has been lifted as a flap it has been lifted as a flap and this is the lesion which is being revealed this is the lesion which is look at the normal nail bed normal nail bed and this is the lesion which is looking at you the moment you lift up the you lift up the nail proximal attachment of the nail bed is retained remember this patient is being operated under a finger tourniquet finger tourniquet do not squeeze the finger because uh, because we want some blood to be there to be able to identify the the lesion so do not, you ne you need not squeeze it just elevate the finger and apply a finger tourniquet which is usually the common surgical glove the base of it which is being used and the beautiful view of the glomus tumor typical glomus tumor again look at the size it is just a few millimeters and this